Hello guys and welcome back. This is our third video about the echocardiographic modalities and today I'm going to talk about the M mode. I really hope you enjoy this video and don't forget to like and subscribe. So let's start. During the clinical application of echocardiography, several imaging modalities are employed. The M mode or motion mode is used clinically for the assessment of valve motion, chamber sizes, aortic root size, wall thickness, and ventricular function. M mode pulses a narrow ultrasound beam in a single plane through the heart, producing images of the tissue in that plane with a very high temporal and spatial resolution. The M mode was the preferred imaging modality in the early days of ultrasound. M mode is defined as time motion display of the ultrasound wave along a chosen ultrasound line. It provides a monodimensional view of the heart. All of the reflectors along this line are displayed along the time axis. The advantage of the M mode is its very high sampling rate which results in a high time resolution so that even very rapid motions can be recorded, displayed and measured. The disadvantage of the M mode is that the ultrasound line is fixed to the tip of the ultrasound sector. It might therefore be difficult to align the M mode perpendicular to the structures which are displayed leading to false measurements. Now that we know some general information about the M mode, let's talk about the M mode physics. Often utilized for its excellent axial and temporal resolution of structures, M mode is a form of ultrasonography in which a single scan line is emitted, received and display graphically. An M mode recording is conventionally displayed with the abscissa representing time and the ordinate distance from the transducer. The latter derive from the time delay from echo emission to reflection and detection. A single piezoelectric crystal is recorded and displayed graphically of which represents the acoustic impedance or density of the material encountered. These signals are subsequently displayed as dots, the brightness of which is proportional to the amplitude of reflected waves. An alternating current directed through one of the crystals in the ultrasound transducer footprint results in its structural deformation, which results in conduction of compression rarefaction waves through an adjacent conducting medium. If these transmitted pulses encounter an interface between two structures, reflection may occur. As the speed of sound is relatively constant in soft tissues, roughly 1540 meters per second, the distance at which the transmitted poles encounter the structure in question may be inferred based on the transit time. The distance from the transducer will be graphed on the vertical plane whereas the time elapsed during recording is represented by the horizontal plane. Thanks to the high sampling frequency, the M mode provides not only an excellent temporal resolution, but also a superior axial resolution compared to the B mode. So, what is the clinical use for the M mode? 
As we said before, the temporal resolution of the M mode is most useful in delineating the path of structures moving at a high velocity, as well as their timing. The axial resolution is also vital in echocardiography, as it allows the resolution of delicate cardiac structures, which are difficult to resolve, especially with transthoracic echocardiography. The M mode has lost importance, but is still valuable in certain situations. With the M mode, we can measure the aortic root size the aortic valve opening and the left atrium size. In this image, you can see that I'm using the end mode on the parasternal short axis view at the aortic valve level. Using the end mode on this view allows you to measure the aortic root size, the left atrium size, and also allows you to visualize the aortic valve opening and closure. Oftenly, we use the M mode to assess the longitudinal systolic function of the right ventricle. With the M mode, we can measure the excursion of the lateral tricuspid annulus during systole also known as TAPSI. TAPSI is an index of right ventricular function. You can also use the M mode to measure the left and right ventricular size and wall thickness in diastole and systole. The most common view to do this is the parasternal long axis view and the parasternal short axis view at the papillary muscle level. By using the M mode to measure the left ventricular size in diastole and systole, you are also estimating the ejection fraction by the Teachholz method and therefore assessing the systolic function of the left ventricle. In this picture, I'm using the M mode on the parasternal short axis view at the papillary muscle level to measure the diameter of the left ventricle in diastole and systole. Also, I'm measuring the wall thickness in diastole and systole. So, as you can see, if you use it correctly, the M mode can be a very powerful tool. Also, in every scan, we use the M mode to measure the longitudinal systolic function of the left ventricle. You can measure the systolic excursion of the mitral annular plane, also known as MAPSI. As I said before, this is an index for left ventricular function. You can measure the MAPSI on the lateral annulus as well on the septal annulus. Another clinical use of the M mode is to assess the mitral valve. By placing the M mode across the mitral valve leaflets on the parasternal short axis view, you can visualize the leaflet motion. Thanks to the high temporal and axial resolution, we can assess the leaflet's motion in order to diagnose mitral stenosis, for example. On the left, we can see this picture of a mitral valve with a normal leaflet's motion. And on the right side, we have a mitral valve with stenosis. Another common view where you can use the M mode to assess the mitral valve is the parasternal long axis view. By using the M mode across the mitral valve, we can also obtain information about the systolic function. 
The E-point septal separation is a measurement used to estimate ejection fraction. This is basically the vertical distance between the maximal early excursion of the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve and the interventricular septum. As you can see, the mitral valve excursion not only gives us information about the mitral valve, but also can give us important information about the left ventricular function and hemodynamics. We can also use the mitral valve excursion to assess the diastolic function of the left ventricle. Temporal resolution allows for the timing of the early and late diastolic excursions to be related to the ECG. This corresponds to the E and A wave on the mitral valve excursion. The clinical use of the M-mode is endless. With M-mode, we can assess the right ventricular diastolic collapse, which is a specific sign for the presence of cardiac tamponade. You can also assess the presence or absence of systolic anterior motion of the mitral valve. The M mode is very important to assess endocarditis because you can visualize the movement of the vegetation. Another important use of the M mode is to assess the abnormal septal motions due to pulmonary hypertension or constriction, for example. What is color M mode? The M mode can be combined with other imaging modalities such as color or tissue Doppler. This is often used to assess regurgitations. This is basically using the color Doppler option on top of the M mode tool. We can also use the color M mode to assess the diastolic function. Diastolic function can be evaluated from color M mode echocardiography by measuring the early diastolic flow propagation velocity. However, this method has limitation and may not accurately represent diastolic filling. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments which other videos would you like to see and don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye!